Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of Fast Graphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, a.k.a. Mr. Valuation. You know, I've been talking about the difference between value and growth in my last video and, you know, got some nice comments on that. And I do want to make a distinction. Some people commented about, you know, what you should do. You should always try to buy growth at a low value. And I think that's true. I think if you're going to invest for growth, you want to buy it at a low value. But you also have things like investing for income. And I use stocks in the video where, you know, you got a higher dividend yield if you're looking for current income without being forced to sell stocks. You might want to invest in a lower growth utility stock or a stock like Campbell Soup that I showed in the video. But the point is you need to invest according to your objectives. But if you're looking for total rate of return or total return and looking to get good solid growth and maybe even a little bit of dividend income, one sector that's obviously very promising is the IT or information technology sector. The problem is it's very, very hard to find any technology today that can be bought at a reasonable price. All right, now I'm going to cover, I'm going to look at four or five, actually five information technology companies of which I like every one of the companies from a standpoint of their business and their growth potential. However, four of them I don't like at all based on their valuation. After all, I am Mr. Valuation. But yet there is one tech stock that I'm going to suggest that you might want to start considering for future purchase that has recently become attractively valued, okay? And I do want to try to make that distinction. So I'm going to be covering these five stocks. They're all familiar. I'm going to be talking about Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, and then the newer Square, which are all payment services or payment services related. And then I'll give you the mystery stock, the one that I think is one that you can invest in today at the end of the video. So let's start by looking at Visa. And I want to make a point before I cover all of these companies. There are certain things when I'm looking for total return that I really, really like. One of them is I like to see consistent earnings growth. So we're starting out with Visa here, and you can see their operating earnings growth has been 21.7%. It's consistently increased its earnings from 56 cents to 73, all the way up to $5.91. Last year, by the way, their fiscal year is in September and expected to earn over $7 or a 20% increase for this fiscal year, which we're currently in. All right, so what I like is the consistency of the growth here. And the company did start, Visa did start paying a dividend, you know, back here in 2008. And you can see that their dividend has increased each year. And this area below the white line, and remember this for the other companies I show you, is the payout ratio. And they actually have a very low payout ratio relative to a lot of companies. And, you know, here's we got just under 20% payout ratio. Here we got 23% payout ratio, et cetera. So I've got really great earnings growth. I've got really consistent dividend growth. I've only got a dividend yield of 0.7%, but I do have a lot of growth. I really like this. Okay, I'm going to go through some of these other companies here and show you what I'm talking about. And the next look at MasterCard, which I would call, you know, Visa's nearest competitor. And it's almost deja vu all over again, as the late great Yogi Berra used to be so fond of saying. And once again, we see a very similar picture. We see earnings growth of just under 24%, very consistent, a dividend payout ratio that's low, but the company's increased its dividend every year saving business. This is the kind of company, this is a, this is a picture of the business behind the stock. These are the kind of businesses that you really want to own as an owner slash shareholder slash partner, companies that are growing like crazy and growing their businesses. Now, the next one I want to show is PayPal, which is an, also an aspect of payment processing, which Visa and MasterCard are also in, but PayPal has its own little niche, obviously. Here we've got another 23% grower, a much shorter history. We, they don't have any dividend here, but we've got that nice, consistent dividend growth. And then finally, you know, I'm going to show you Square. Okay, Square is a company, now I'm going to have to shorten the time frame. This is owned by Jack Dorsey or founded by Jack Dorsey, who also is the founder of Twitter. And once again, you see a very fast growing company, over 48% growth and reasonably consistent growth as well. All right. So all of these companies look very, very attractive from the standpoint of their businesses and how their businesses have historically performed. But here's the rub. The orange line on these graphs represents an intrinsic value based on, in this case, uh, looking at Visa, a PE ratio of 21.7, which is equal to the company's earnings growth rate over this time frame. Going forward, looking at the company in a forward position, 
inflation, it's expected to continue to grow at 18%, and long term at 16%. So I'm going to continue to look at PE ratios above 15, which is my you know standard. So I like that. But here's the problem. When I put weekly closing stock prices on this graph, you can see that Visa was overvalued back in 08, and then we had this big correction. Okay, now, by the way, even if you bought it here, you'd always be making money out to here. That's the beauty of growth stocks. But the point is, you could have bought it at a very attractive valuation back here. And then starting in 2013, 2014, which is very common as we came out of the Great Recession of 08, you see that the price has separated and it continues to separate. Now, the normal P.E. ratio over this long time frame, because you have all these P.E. ratios here that are in the 30s and even the 40s, you know, the current blended P.E. ratio is 356 the dividend yields 0.7, the, the earnings yields only 2.8%. And you can see, you know, there's some cracks in the armor showing up. Very, very expensive stock today. But I love this company. I'd love to own this stock. In fact, I did invest in this company back here. And you could say I you know, ruefully sold it in 2018. And I left all this money on the table. But at the same time, I made a great deal of money. And I never, ever look back and regret taking a profit. These, I think there's an awful lot of risk, and that's a point that gets overlooked in owning a stock with these kind of lofty valuations. So the next one I want to show you is MasterCard, and it's a very, very similar story. You've got a stock that traded within, you know, its normal or reasonable range of about a 23, 24 P.E. ratio. Then we got these very high P.E. ratios coming up here, which means the stock's at great risk. COVID gave us, almost gave us a chance to, you know, buy it again. We had this flash crash drop. It's starting to show some, you know, cracks in the armor as well, where the price has been doing poorly, let's say, since, you know, the summer, since June of this year, we've seen this drop in value. But again, another great company. Now we get into the more, you know, the younger, more even, you know, faster growing companies or still very fast growing companies like PayPal. And we see the same thing. We see good earnings growth, but we see an irrational, exuberant look at the stock. We see the price got really ridiculous. Now we're starting to see a drop in the price. So all three of these stocks have seen a pretty severe correction in their price. That's important as I go through this. And then last but not least in this genre, I want to talk about Square. Okay, and Square, again, is a very fast growing company. If I shorten the time frame, you see that the earnings growth has been over 40%. The stock got really overvalued in 2018. That was dead money for the next four or five years. You actually would have lost a substantial amount of money. And then as we came out of the flash crash and out of COVID, the stock's been on this tear and it's really done really well. But if I look at it over the last year or so, it's been very flat and starting to correct. So even though I I love all of these companies and I think they're all great stocks and it's an IT stock, an information technology stock that I could be excited about investing in. None of these stocks meet my criteria as Mr. Valuation of being at fair value. But there's kind of an unsung hero here, Global Payments Inc., that I want to show you that also has a very, very consistent record of growing the business, a longer record than some of the others I've showed you. They do pay a dividend. The dividend payout ratio has been very low in previous years, but now they're starting to pay out, let's say, in the teens percentage of their dividend. So we do have a little dividend yield. OK, but the real story here is that like all the others, it got overvalued as well starting in 2014. But we've now had this real nice correction to where the stock is actually trading on the historical basis, at least at a reasonable valuation. So all of a sudden, I found a tech stock that I've been looking for that I can invest in. I want to thank one of the subscribers of our YouTube channel for bringing this one to my attention. In fact, ironically, and much to my embarrassment, we actually use this company currently as a payment processor for our fast graphs subscription product. So it's one that I should have actually focused on earlier. But anyway, regardless, the stock looks very attractive. Looking at it going forward, it's forecast to grow at over 20% for the next two years. That would give me very, very substantial rates of return if the stock's P.E. ratio, which is currently 16.71, would return to a what I would call a fair value based on its growth rate of 20.89. I've got 30% 
you know, return potentials. The long-term growth expectation is 19%. So even if I looked at a 19 multiple and looked out the next three or four years, I've got double-digit 20% plus rates of return potential to buy this stock today, okay? So it's a very, very attractive stock. And like all the other payment processors and other IT data processing and outsourced services company, it's had a correction as well. But the difference is it's corrected to a point where it's actually in a attractive valuation and actually beginning to give me a margin of safety. Okay, now all of this whole industry is clearly out of favor. In fact, let's check real quick and see what it's doing today. We'll go into Google Finance here. And it's actually down almost 3% again today. So this is an industry that's out of favor. And, you know, we might see the same thing with, let's, let's take a look at Square. We'll just do a couple here and see how they're doing. Square's actually up a little bit. Bottom line is, not to you know belabor this, is this is an industry that's been out of favor for the last several months. And you know, so it, from that point of view, if I'm you know going to look at adding this, if I'm a total return investor looking to get a high total return in the future at a reasonable level of risk, I want to certainly put this one on my radar and watch it. And as the margin of safety builds up here, I could start building a position, frankly, right now, or I could be a little more patient and see if I can get a little better entry. But that's where your own personal judgment gets involved. You have to make those decisions for yourself. So, you know, now there are some other issues here. I can go through this. You know, I did this with all of these companies and I found something very similar, but I, I do want to make a point. There's a reason why these stocks have started to come down. So let's run it through some other metrics. You know, if I'm looking at fast graphs, first thing I'm looking for is earnings growth, which I've I've shown you clearly the company has great earnings growth. I like valuation, and I'm going to measure valuation looking at it from a standpoint of cash flow. It looks very attractively valued based on operating cash flow, and they have plenty of operating cash flow to cover the dividend. Free cash flow, it also looks very attractively valued. This is about as close to Warren Buffett's owner's earnings as you'll get. And looking at it from a standpoint of its normal price to free cash flow, it actually would be slightly undervalued, you know, currently. If I look at, at EBITDA, which is another form of cash flow, it looks very attractively valued. If I look at EBIT or operating margin earnings before interest and taxes, it looks also undervalued. And of course, price to sales, little different story, but it is coming into alignment even with price to sales. So from all the valuation measurements I've got here, the stock begins to look intriguing. So now I would turn to fund graphs and I would start looking at some of these other metrics that I've talked about. So, you know, I'll go here and clear this for you first. And, you know, I want to look at net income. One of my first one is I, I want to look at cash flow from operations higher than net income. So I've got net operating cash flow. I'm going to go ahead and close out these other two here just to clear the slate on this. And I've got my cash flow from operations exceeding the net income. Okay, now the next thing I want to look at then is net income growth over the last three to five years. And this is where I think you're starting to see, you know, why these stocks have been dropping. The company is still generating good net income, if you will, but the net income trend has been dropping for the last three or four years, which I think, you know, partially explains why the stock is coming into reasonable value. The debt to equity ratio is very, very good. If I look at, at debt to equity here, and let me get rid of... Uh, price to basic earnings. The debt to equity ratio is 0.3, which means it's, you know, it has much more equity than it does debts. So I have to like that. Let's look at some of the other ratios here that I think are very important. Let me look at some of these profitability ratios. So let's start with return on assets. As I mentioned, I normally like return on assets to be 10% or better. Here, they, the stock you know, falls down a little bit and the return on assets has been dropping. Again, it's a very competitive industry. Return on equity, if I look at return on equity, it's perhaps a little better, but still not great. And then, you know, finally, if I look at EBIT margin, you know, EBIT, as I showed you already, looks okay. So as I go through this, I've got some things that I need to be paying attention to and watch out for. But I'm now starting to get the valuation that would make it an interesting opportunity. So if I wanted to invest in IT, it's so hard to find anything at value. This looks like a really great choice. Again, forecasts are for strong growth going forward on the company. Operating cash flow is looking to continue to grow. Free cash flow is looking to continue to grow. 
And so all in all, I think this is a stock that I want to put on my own radar screen now, one that I want to start looking at. If I want to get some total return in the portfolio and get some growth with a little bit of di dividend income kicker and some dividend growth, I might want to add this. Now, looking at it from a long-term performance perspective, you can see that it has dramatically outperformed the S&P on a total rate of return going all the way back to 2001. If I look at it a little closer, looking at it from a standpoint of what I'll call the hot market, where we've had the market coming out of the Great Recession, where the market has done so well, I still have outperformed. This has been some of the best performance that the stock market measured by the S&P has ever achieved. It's usually a 65 to 7% return. It's averaged over 14, but yet global payments has averaged over 17. You know, I've never seen a perfect stock in my life. This one has a lot of attributes that I really like and admire, but it's not perfect. I do have some concerns with their net income. There's some things that I'm going to be spending some time researching. And, you know, how you do that, of course, is you go into the company website. I can also look at other services out there. I've screened it at, at companies like Morningstar and Zaxx. Uh, Morningstar likes the company from the standpoint that they focus on small merchants, and that's kind of their niche. And they have a distinct niche that shields it from its larger competitors, according to Morningstar. And it's actually a clear leader in this niche. So, you know, that's kind of a positive for the company because payments are, you know, really growing. If I, you know, go on and look at it through other research services like Zach's Investment Research, Zach's gives several reasons to buy the stock. They think the company is... Um, you know, really poised for future growth. They've made a lot of acquisitions, and that's something that's happening. The industry is kind of consolidating. They recently acquired Total Systems, and that was one of their biggest acquisitions to date. They're also in talks with another major company that where, that, where it fell through that might be resurrected. That's something to be watching for this year. Now, reasons to sell, you know, there's not really very many. You know, the businesses are under margin pressure right now, as you saw. It's not anticipating any recovery, according to Zach's, you know, in their card business. And they expect corporate travel to remain depressed through 2021. But it will be absorbing the impact of that uh, one by one on its customers. But according to, and this is a big plus, research and markets, the worldwide bill now, pay later market, which is what global payments really is participating in here. It was a trend that, according to research and markets, was triggered by covid they believe the worldwide market will witness a compound annual growth of over 22% from 2021 through 2028. And as the same market is liable to obtain a $3.98 trillion in size by 2030. And this company is very competitive in the industry. But you can go into the company's website like I've done here. You can go into their investor relations section. And then you can look at, you know, webcasts and associated material here. And there's some nice industry trends that you can look at. And there's some, you know, they give you a lot of information to get yourself familiar. I believe this stock is worthy of continuous research. I'm going to kind of stop it there for today's video. Out of the five IT companies here in the data processing and outsource services section, I really, this would be the only one that would get my attention. Although I love the whole industry, I just don't like the general valuation. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Here's an IT idea that is very hard to come by today, so I hope you got something out of it. I would recommend digging deeper into this one, though. If you liked the video, give me a like. You know, give me a thumbs up, ring the bell, subscribe to the channel, and take a look at Fast Graphs if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.